Now, the head of Iraq's popular mobilization units has demanded U.S. troops withdraw from Iraq. Falah al Fayyad said Iraqis cannot welcome as guests those who commit inhumane and insulting acts. He added that Iraqis are not seeking a war but will defend themselves and their dignity. Fayyad went on to say that the new U.S. administration and Congress speak of domestic terrorism but fail to denounce terrorist acts committed by the administration of former American President Donald Trump outside the United States. Trump ordered the assassination of top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and former head of the Popular Mobilization Units Abu Mahdi al-Muhendis in Iraq over a year ago. Following the terror act, the Iraqi parliament passed legislation requiring the U.S. military to leave Iraq. Kevin Barrett is an author and Middle East expert and joins us now. Kevin, welcome. You know, from 2003 to 2011, the United States had a much bigger military presence. The United States occupation had a much bigger military presence uh, in Iraq, sophisticated weapons and what have you. And then, but the Iraqi resistance kicked them out. Today, they have less uh, forces in Iraq. The occupation has less um, military bases. And the Iraqi f uh, resistance it has more advanced weapons. And they're asking them to kindly leave and avoid a bloodbath. Why is America not leaving? Because the powers behind the scenes here that own the United States government don't want the U.S. to leave. Uh, those powers include the uh, the corporate establishment and the military industrial complex, which is making uh, vast amounts of money off of war all over the world. And then, of course, there's the uh, Zionist lobby, which is essentially the main force that hijacked the U.S. government on September 11th, 2001, with the mother of all false flags designed to trick the United States military into destroying the adversaries of Israel. So the, we have these uh, horrible special interests here in the United States uh, running our government, and they don't want to leave Iraq. There are people making money in Iraq, and if the U.S. leaves the region, the uh, Zionist entity, uh, which is, of course, Israel, the euphemism for the genocide of Palestine, and the uh, rather unrepresentative, shall we say, uh, barbaric medieval uh, regime in occupied Arabia, uh, these kinds of relics of the era of U.S. imperialism would be finished. So there's some strategic reasons too. Uh, and then finally, we have to add that the Biden administration probably will be, if anything, at least as bad, if not worse than the Trump administration. Uh, Trump's instincts were to want to pull out of these endless wars, whereas Biden has been a bit of a warmonger for most of his career. He famously staged propaganda hearings in the Senate in 2003 and paraded a group of PNAC Zionist so-called experts uh, across the screens of America, uh, telling us that Saddam Hussein was had all kinds of weapons of mass destruction and was about to nuke New York. Uh, so Biden, is he runs with a bad crowd, and we shouldn't expect this administration will be any better. They're going to keep Iraq, uh, occupying Iraq until the Iraqis succeed in fully and completely kicking them out. Uh, we, t we, we don't see, Kevin, a, mili a U.S. military where it wages war and wins. We just don't see that. Uh, as you quite rightly pointed out, it does end in defeat from Vietnam to uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, what, you name it, they've, they've, defeat, they've been defeated there. Um, the other point is uh, regarding the recent um, explosions and the attacks on the Iraqi forces themselves, some of whom sacrificed a lot to defend Iraq. Uh, do you see any coincidence with the Biden being inaugurated and suddenly you've got Daesh back on the scene? That's an interesting question. Donald Trump famously accused the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton in particular of creating Daesh. And that was one of those times when Trump was actually speaking the truth. That is, uh, under the Obama administration, the same neoconservative uh, wing of the U.S. black ops and policymaking apparatus did, in fact, create Daesh uh, 
uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was a prisoner of the Americans for uh, three and a half or four years. The U.S. military lied and said they only had him for a year. He was in Abu Ghraib, and then he was uh, in uh, Camp uh, Bakr, where, and while he was in Camp Bakr, the he and these other sort of veterans of uh, Saddam's regime were trained by the Americans and perhaps subject to mind control and other kind of forms of intensive training to convince them to become what they ultimately became. They were always just mercenaries for the occupiers and their mission is destabilization. And so now Biden's back and suddenly Daesh is back. Maybe, you know, Trump, uh, for all of his evil and corruption, really did put a lid on the U.S. support for Daesh. And now that we're back to business as usual with Biden, maybe the U.S. is uncorking that bottle and letting the uh, evil genie out again. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, Kevin. I'm just thinking of Zarqawi and all the other uh, terrorist leaders that have uh, operated in Iraq and Syria. At some point, they spent time in U.S. American jails.